we are going to real quick walk through how to construct a panel data set from individual cross sections. A uh, previous tutorial we talked about how to start with multiple time series and turn that into a panel. Uh, I'll link that one in the description. Uh, so here, let's imagine, well, we don't have to imagine, we actually have uh, cross-sectional data here for three different time periods. Uh, in this example, this is bank level balance sheet data uh, here from 2009, quarter one, 2009, quarter two, quarter three. Um, and imagine we have many more of those. Uh, so all we're gonna do is basically stack these individual cross sections one on top of the other. And let's go ahead and open up one of them in state air and see what we have to deal with. Here we go. And so we've got all of our balance sheet indicators here across multiple banks. So our cross-sectional identifier here is entity. And then if we scroll down to the bottom here, we also have a variable called time. Obviously, we're going to need both of those to uniquely identify each observation once we construct the panel. So if we just real quick browse the data here by entity and time, well, of course, what we see is each entity shows up only one period because this is a cross section. Right? And the whole trick here is setting up your data before you do the, the combination of the, the data sets. So we have these two indicators, right? If this was all you're going to do is cross section, obviously we wouldn't need a time indicator because it's the same for every observation. So now all we have to do is go up to data, combine data sets and append data sets. And we just go find the next time period. So we started with the 0903. Now we'll go to the same data set, 0906. And if we open that up, right, there would already be a time indicator there that would be equal to two for every observation, time equal to three every observation in the next period, etc. So that's the whole trick that we would have to go through and do that ahead of time. But let's go ahead and select that next time period here. And we hit OK, and we see the command that was brought up here, append, and then we follow the trace to our target data file. And now let's sort our data by entity and time again. And let's re-browse and see what we have. Well, now, now we have a panel, or a two-period panel. So bank entity 37 shows up in period one and period two. Bank 242 shows up in period one and period two, etc. And now, as long as you've got your, again, all your data ready to go, so the next one has that time indicator equal to three, we can bring back up the append command here in Stata and just make that little change. So now we're bringing up our data file for 0909, quarter three, 2009, and everything else is exactly the same. And let's resort our data again. And again, browse entity and time, and we see exactly what we want. So each bank appears multiple periods. The ones that we're looking at here all appear three periods. Right? We may or may not have a balanced panel. And now you're ready to use all of our panel XT commands, right? So we can go XT set, entity, and time. So our panel variable, our cross-sectional identifier, entity, time period, one to three. And now we could do something like a fixed effects or a random effects panel regression, right? So just for the sake of example, let's try to predict loans with assets using the fixed effects option. And there we have it, right? So we have our panel dimensions outlined here. 
and our number of groups, the number of banks that appear, total number of observations across our three periods. So if you were doing uh, additional periods, we would just continue that same pattern. Okay. All right. I hope that is helpful. Thanks a lot.